A set S is said to be pairwise distinguishable over a language if any X and Y in S are distinguishable over L. The number of states for a finite automaton recognizing L is at least as large as the number of elements in any pairwise distinguishable set. So if we could find a maximal pairwise distinguishable set, this would tell us the minimum number of states for a finite automaton recognizing our language. So how can we find it? So let L be a language, and let X squiggle Y whenever X and Y are indistinguishable with respect to L. The elements of our set of strings can be partitioned into equivalence classes. Then, the set S is a maximal pairwise distinguishable set over L if and only if S contains one element from each equivalence class. So let's prove it. Again, the purpose of proof is that it reviews what you know, reveals new insights, and raises new questions. So this is a biconditional, an if and only if statement, and it's useful when you're proving to rewrite biconditionals as two if-then statements. And that's because you could always assume the antecedent of a conditional. This is the pair of conditionals. If S is a maximal pairwise distinguishable set, then it contains one element from each equivalence class. And if S has an element from each equivalence class, then it is a maximal pairwise distinguishable set. So first we'll prove that if S is a maximal pairwise distinguishable set, then it contains one element from each equivalence class. So suppose S is a maximal pairwise distinguishable set, let Z be an equivalence class, we'll show that some element of Z must be in S. Now the class representative is always in the equivalence class, so let's consider Z. If X and Z are distinguishable for every X in S, then S union Z is a pairwise distinguishable set, but it has more elements than S, which was assumed maximal. So there must be a Y in S where Y and Z are not distinguishable. But if Y and Z are not distinguishable, then Y is in the equivalence class of Z, so S has an element of that equivalence class. Consequently, S contains an element from every equivalence class. Next, we want to prove that if S contains an element from every equivalence class, then it is a maximal pairwise distinguishable set. So again, we can assume the antecedent, S contains an element from every equivalence class. So if X and Y are in S, then X is in some equivalence class and Y is in some equivalence class. And since S is a set of pairwise distinguishable elements, then X and Y must be distinguishable over L. Since if they're not distinguishable, then X is an element of the equivalence class of Y. So the equivalence class of X is the equivalence class of Y, and S contains two elements from that equivalence class. And this means that S must be a pairwise distinguishable set. Now, we also want to prove that S is maximal, that we can't have additional elements. So, suppose there's some element not in S, where for any X in S, X and Z are distinguishable. Then, first of all, Z can't be in the equivalent class of X. And since the equivalence classes form a complete partition of our set of strings, there is another equivalence class formed by Z. And since S includes a representative from every equivalence class, there has to be some Y in that equivalence class that's also in S. But remember, Z is distinguishable from every element of S, so Z has to be distinguishable from Y, but this means Y can't be in the equivalence class. And since this leads to a contradiction no matter what, that means there can't be some element not in S that is distinguishable from all the other elements. So S must be maximal. And this leads to the following. Consider a string. If we process the string 
then the first symbol is in some equivalence class. The first two symbols are a string in some equivalence class. The first three symbols are a string in some equivalence class, and so on. And since any string is in some equivalence class, this suggests we can use the equivalence classes as our states in our finite automaton with the transition defined by which class the next symbol would take us to. Consequently, let S be a maximal pairwise distinguishable set over our language. Then a finite automaton recognizing our language has that many states. We might represent the transition as shown. There is just one problem. Suppose some string is an element of the equivalence class of x. In general, x prime a won't be the same as x a because the leading part of the string is different. So it's possible that the equivalence class generated by x prime a is not the same as the equivalence class generated by x a. In that case, we say that our operation is not well defined. And if an operation is defined on equivalence classes, it must have the same results regardless of the class representative used. We can't define an operation otherwise. Eh, why worry about it? After all, it's not your company that will go bankrupt if you make a mistake. Or maybe it is, or at the very least, you'll end up having to look for a new job. So let's try to prove that this actually works. We want to prove that concatenation is well defined. In other words, if y is in an equivalence class and a is some symbol, the equivalence class generated using the class representative a is the same as the equivalence class generated using y a. So suppose x and y are both in some equivalence class. Since both of them are in z, they're indistinguishable over l. So now let's consider x a and y a. Suppose they're distinguishable over l. This means there's some string q where exactly one of these is in l and the other is not. For convenience, we also call this without loss of generality, we'll assume that x a q is the string in l and y a q is not. But a q is a string. So x concatenated with aq is in L, and y concatenated with aq is not in L. Consequently, x and y are distinguishable over L, and so x and y can't be in the same equivalence class. Since they are in the same equivalence class, xa and ya can't be distinguishable over L, so ya must be in the same equivalence class, and that means that the equivalence class generated by ya is the same as the equivalence class generated by xa. And so this transition is well defined, and that allows us to construct minimal finite automata. Let's see how that works next.